So this is a Higgs event at the compact muon solenoid, the CMS detector on CERN, on the LHC ring. Um, you can see the straight line coming in is proton, and from the other side as well is a proton. They're colliding here in the middle. They're colliding at about 8 tera electron volts, okay, a huge amount of energy. They are both individually traveling at 99.9999999991 of the speed of light, so very, very rapid. All that energy is being turned into this mess of new particles here. And somewhere in that, that mess, there is a possibility that a Higgs could be detected. Now, the Higgs itself will not leave a track in this detector. It's an uncharged particle, so they have to actually extrapolate back from the evidence of the, the charged particles that are created and work out whether or not they think a Higgs has been created and they were able to detect Higgs often enough to have statistical proof that the Higgs is in fact um, a, a reality. Uh, they, they can tell just by looking at this they can tell from the curvature what charge the particles have also the momentum of the particles and also that each particle is scintillating on one of the different detectors the different colors here represent the different levels of detection at the CMS they, they, they scintillate, they deposit their energy on there, so they also get a read of the energy of that particle. This photograph is Carl Anderson's discovery of the positron. So this is really the proof, the evidence for antimatter after Dirac had predicted it in his famous equation. And hopefully by the end of this video we're going to understand exactly why we know that is a anti-electron, a, a positron, not an electron. Uh, you really need, though, to start from the key principles in detection. So the principles that you need to be able to apply to any particle uh, picture you're given, any picture of a bubble or a cloud chamber you're given. Okay, those principles are, first, the ionization. Okay, you cannot, you cannot detect... Uh, particles without charge because when they move through the cloud or if, if you like the, the vapor and it's usually like an alcohol vapor they don't leave any tracks they don't do any ionization as a charged particle moves through the um, the vapor it actually ionizes things so we're not really looking at the particle itself we're looking at evidence that it's been there we're looking at its trail of like ionized particles its trail of um, condensation that it's left as it's moved through the vapor. Okay, so the first principle is ionization. Also, you know how ionizing something is by the thickness of its track. So this is not a very thick track, so we know it is not a very ionizing particle. If, it's a, if it was an alpha particle, we know that it would be a thicker track. The other um, main principle that you're going to have to apply at least is that the positive and the negative charges they curve in an opposite direction okay so actually it is once more applying Fleming's left-hand rule okay and you need to be able to actually or work out which direction the current is which direction the field is to work out which direction the force is and as it's a curve well the force we're talking about is going to be a centripetal force isn't it okay and then the last principle that I just talked about a little bit when I talking about the CMS is scintillation okay and that is not actually being employed here in this photo here it is when a particle deposits its energy on a charged grid and we actually just measure a scalar term how much energy that particle had when it hit that grid and then there's one more it is momentum we can tell how much momentum a charged particle has by the amount of curvature so this particle has less curvature before it hits this like plate in the middle and then more curvature afterwards so we know the particle is moving in this direction loses momentum when it does a collision through this piece of lead and then the curvature is greater afterwards but that can also not just tell us which direction it's moving that could also tell us how massive the particle was or how fast it was going 
So how did Carl Anderson work all this out and work out that this was a pro, uh, positron in 1933? Well, he's observed quite a few electrons and judging by the ionisation, judging by the width of the track, he could see that it was about the same width as an electron. So he said it was just as ionising as an electron. He could see from its momentum, and I've already said this, that it was going in this direction. It, this is a lead plate in the middle. Okay, So he knew that it was going to lose some momentum, wasn't completely stopped, lose some momentum, and judging by the more curvature of this track, due to a larger F, larger centripetal force, remember that's uh, making it curve. Okay. He did not actually do scintillation, so I guess I can just get rid of the scintillation one there. That wasn't part of his detection apparatus there, then. But he could apply Le Fleming's left-hand rule. He knew, as he'd set the experiment up, he knew that the magnetic field was actually, as we look at it, going into the page. I've done that wrong. Into the page, it's like you're looking at the back of the arrow. Let me just draw a few on. So he applied Fleming's left-hand rule. The uh, force is definitely going in this direction. The magnetic field is going into the page, so get your left hand out, orientate your fingers. That shows that the direction of positive current must be this direction. So I is, remember, the direction the positive is going. So therefore, he knew that this was a positive charge. So it's the same scalar charge as the electron, same momentum as an electron, but with opposite charge. So let's presume these are our particle tracks that we've got. We're looking down onto uh, a, a kind of plane which has got some alcohol vapour on it, and in that vapour we see these condensation trails as these ionisations occur. The ionizations due to particles that must be there. So remember, we're not seeing the particles, we're seeing the evidence that they were there. Well, something interesting has happened here. Uh, something has gone on just there. That is most likely due to a collision, but you can't see anything coming in. Well, if we can't see anything, it doesn't necessarily mean that something's not there. What's actually happened is a particle has actually collided with another, probably a stationary particle, just here. Well, what kind of particle was that that's coming in? Well, we can't see any um, trail, so the one thing we know about it is it's a neutral particle. So I'll give it a little zero. Okay, well, what kind of particle has it collided with? Well, that's a tricky thing to work out. And to do that, actually, we need to analyze, well, what does it kind of become? What is the trail of particles that have come from that collision? Well, we need to know then, we need to know uh, what charges are these. That's the first thing we can work out. We can tell that they've all got quite high momentum. So they are actually getting the momentum from this particle that's coming in here. So if you like, I'll just leave a little note. This has got a high momentum. Now, its momentum is transferred to these three particles. You, we do need to know one more thing. We need to know that we're looking at a magnetic field which is into the page on this whole thing. I won't do the whole lot. But we need to know that the magnetic field is going into the page. We set that up as part of our experiment. So which direction are they curving then? Well, this particle here is curving this way. This one is also curving this way. But this one is curving in the opposite direction. Those are, remember, the centripetal forces due to uh, Fleming's left-hand rule force. So use your left-hand rule. Force of the thumb. Uh, 
first finger is the field that's going into the page, so if you want to draw, and the this one is the direction of the positive charge, direction the positive charge is moving, it's I or it's QV. So this one is curving in this direction. Fields going into the page, orientate your left hand rule and you will see that positivity, the positive is going that way. So it must therefore be a positive charge. This one is also a positive charge as well because it's got the same curvature. This last particle here though is going in the opposite direction. So positivity is actually coming towards us here if you like. It's a negative particle moving in that direction. So we've worked out that we've got two positives and one negative. So overall after our collision we've got one positive. Well charge is always conserved. So this particle here must be a positive particle. We had one before and we've got, because of all that extra energy, we've created a negative and another positive. But overall, the charge is positive and then one positive afterwards. One positive before, one positive afterwards. We can see exactly that this had a very high momentum and that energy was used when it collided with this positive particle to create these two extra ones. And most likely that is a proton. In actual fact, you can deduce that this is a proton. This proton has moved that way, it hasn't actually done anything, that's, that, that's the track there. But what's been created here is a, a pi plus and a pi minus particle. Now, there are some other little swirls around here, aren't there? And actually we can deduce what they are as well. These aren't anything to do with this interaction, actually. These are just naturally occurring background radiation. Well, we know the three types of radiation, so we can pretty much make a good guess at this. They're not going to be gamma, because, well, gamma doesn't have any charge, so it won't be detected in our cloud chain chamber, in our bubble chamber. Um, and we know this one is more ionizing. It's more ionizing because it's got a thicker trail. It's pretty low energy, pretty low momentum, so it's doing quite a tight little swirl. But which direction is it curling? Well, the force is in this way. Remember, the field is still into the page, so the current, therefore, must be going in this direction. So it's positive. You probably already guessed that is an alpha particle. This one, however, Force is going into the centre of the circle. Doesn't matter which side you do it; it will just it will still be the same thing. It's about the curvature. Force is that way. The current, therefore, is going in this direction here. It's losing momentum, so we know it's always spiralling inwards. So we know this one is a negative. And here it's just the same, but it's obviously the other way around. The force has changed, so the current direction has changed. You know, this one is a negative particle. Okay, well, that's all there is to it, really. This one, you can, I'll leave you to work out exactly what that might be as well. Yep, you've probably guessed fin trail, not very ionizing, and negative, it's going to be a beta, isn't it?